Hi DJs, we're back with another Summer Shorts tip here on DJ NTV. I'm DJ Rachel and today I'm going to be talking about the controversial auto mix feature in Virtual DJ 8 and hopefully debunk some of the myths and misconceptions about this feature which has unfortunately given Virtual DJ a beginner DJ software reputation. Now this couldn't be farther from the truth. In fact, Virtual DJ is one of the most powerful and intuitive programs in the market today. So today my focus is to show you how to use the auto mix feature, how to customize it to get the sound that you're looking for, but more importantly, really emphasize the function and purpose as well as the limitations of this feature. Now, some people think that the auto mix in Virtual DJ is replacing the DJ and the actual need for a DJ to mix and use skills to blend two tracks together. I can tell you that this is the farthest from the truth. In fact, I plan on highlighting the limitations of the auto mix feature. And if there is a DJ who is solely using the auto mix feature to execute their blends, they're going to be very disappointed with the outcome. Now I don't care if you're a club DJ, a wedding DJ, a karaoke DJ, there will be a point in time where someone is going to have to step away from the decks and the software to attend to a matter that may be more pressing than actually mixing music at that moment. This is where the auto mix feature can come into play. It allows the DJ to have music playing as much as they need for as long as they need if they have to step away to attend to something at an event or a gig. So it's very beneficial but again I want to stress that this does not replace a DJ actually needing to mix. So let's jump right in and take a look. Okay welcome to my main screen. So as you can see I have the auto mix feature already pulled up right here on the right. Now auto mix, as I said, is designed to take two tracks and blend them together without the DJ having to manipulate the actual software or use their controller or mixer. So to get started, I have a basic dinner cocktail playlist pulled up here and I'm just going to randomly click some tracks and move them over here to the auto mix playlist. So to activate Automix, I'm simply going to hit this button here. And when I do, it's going to turn green. It's going to drag a song up into a deck. And it's also going to add an additional waveform below it, showing you that that is the next song to be played. So let's take a look. So as you can see, I activated Automix. It has pulled up a track. And it has put an additional waveform right here, showing you that this is the next song that's going to be mixed into um, the Automix. So to hear how this sounds, I'm just going to advance the track a little bit so we can hear an auto mix. All right, now I'll do one more. So this is the single auto mix feature, and this is to my personal audio settings, and I'm gonna show you how you can customize this in just a second, but there is another feature that I wanted to just mention because this has contributed to the controversy of auto mix. So this is known as the dual auto mix feature, and it was available in older versions of Virtual DJ, but it has been kind of tucked away in Virtual DJ 8, and I wanna show you how to access it and kind of how it functions. So I'm gonna come up here to the settings button. I'm gonna cl click on options and then here in the search bar, I'm simply just gonna type in the word dual. And as you can see, it's gonna pull up in auto mix this auto mix dual deck feature. Now right now I have it selected to no because again, I personally don't use the dual deck auto mix feature, but I wanted to show you how it works and why it's so controversial. So I'm gonna click yes to activate it. And essentially what this is doing is it is using both decks A and B to auto mix and it does this by moving um, this crossfader in between both decks. So here is what it looks and sounds like. So as you can see the crossfader is moving and it is using both decks. Now the only real advantage to this is that you can see the upcoming song bigger in the opposing deck. 
However, this has really been part of the controversy because it was known to allow the DJ to kind of cheat by pretending to be mixing when the software was actually doing all of the work. And I think we can all agree that this isn't something that the DJ and the software is really striving for. So I'll show you one more time how it works and then I'm going to go back to single mode. So again, it's just utilizing both decks for the auto mix. Okay, so that is the dual deck auto mix feature, but again, I'm gonna swap back to the single deck feature because that is the one that I prefer. So I'm simply gonna click no and activate the single deck auto mix, okay? So now we can kind of talk about how we can customize the sound of the auto mix. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to simply click this dot right here to the right of the auto mix activation button. Now, when I click this, I'm going to get a drop down menu. Now, I do want to mention that there is a more advanced technique on how to finesse the auto mix feature, but this is um, more advanced and it's found in the auto mix editor and we're going to save this for another time. Today I'm just going to focus on the basic features available to you to kind of tweak your auto mix sound. So you're going to notice that there's two options here. I have auto mix type and auto mix length. So I'm going to start with auto mix type. You're going to notice that we have numerous features here. The one that I prefer is actually the fade remove silence. So pretty much what this does is any gap in between the music, it's going to remove that gap and then it's going to automatically fade and mix it in based upon the auto mix length that I told it to. Now my preferred number is four, right here in the middle. I feel that if I go down towards zero, it's very choppy and abrupt, and frankly, 16 seconds is too long of a blend and it tends to sound messy. So my sweet point is around four seconds. Now I'm not gonna take the time to demonstrate what all of these sound and look like. You can play around with this on your own. And I also feel that Virtual DJ does a really good job of describing what these are actually doing to your tracks, such as removing the intro or outro, or it removes nothing, or it's cutting in. So you can play with this on your own, but you do have the option to really tweak how your auto mix sounds. Now the one that really brings up the most controversy is the Auto Mix Smart. And again, I'm going to show you how this works, but I'm also going to highlight the limitations of this feature. So first let me start by removing dinner music and actually put in some songs that a DJ um, may actually be mixing. So let me pull up this, pull up this. We'll just grab a, a couple of tracks here and I'm making sure that these are all 128 beats per minute just so you can kind of see, um, you know, how this attempts to be seamless, but it's really not. So let me pull up my first track here and I'm going to start playing it. Okay, now I'm going to activate the smart auto mix feature by simply pressing this button and you're going to notice that it has dragged up another track below it and I have these white auto mix bands here. Now this is actually a really good sign and I've noticed that there's really two types of auto mixing that go on before we start getting into more of the advanced features. Now these bands I guess are what the program has decided what would be a good point to mix in and mix out of the current track based upon I'm assuming some type of algorithm. Now I don't know the science behind this but these mixes with these larger white bands tend to be some of the smoothest uh, sounding auto mix tracks. So let's take a look at what this sounds like. Okay, so you'll notice that it did a pretty basic mix. It faded out one as it dropped in the other one. Um, wasn't anything super fancy or really amazing. It just was a good way to keep the beat consistently going. And that is probably one of the best case scenarios of what this sounds like. What I have mostly discovered is a lot of the auto mix really just gives you these skinny little lines. And when you see this, it typically just cuts from one track to the next and it really doesn't blend or do anything great. So again, here we have another one of those thick white bands. Let's take a look at what it sounds like. Every day I'm 
So as you can see, it just was a basic kind of transition, nothing really articulate, lavish, or amazing going on here. And that is the best case scenario. So I really also want to highlight the difference between the human touch and the auto mix feature. And really the more differentiations there are between the track, whether it's BPMs or keys, the, the more rough the mix is going to be. So really in order to maximize how auto mix sounds, you have to put a lot of planning into the music you're giving it to use to come up with these mixes. So there's a lot of programming involved. If you just think you're just going to haphazardly drag in a bunch of tracks and you're going to have this amazing mix set, it really doesn't work like that. So I hope that this demo really showed that the auto mix feature is not going to replace the DJ. And just to kind of drive this point home, I'm going to do one more mix where I'm going to compete with auto mix. So here we have auto mix taking care of uh, this pretty bland uh, set right here. Sorry, we're going to start playing this track right here. Activate auto mix. And I'm just going to drag it to a part where it would start to mix out. As you can see, we have these two white lines, so it's just going to cut to the next track. Okay, really nothing spectacular there. So now I'm going to take the same two tracks, deactivate the auto mix, and I'm going to take some time to make a two second mix myself. So I'm going to um, go ahead and advance this track just to save some time and start it from here. Okay, so as you can see, the auto mix feature is not going to compete with the DJ actually mixing. And I hope that this tutorial really highlighted that and removed some of the stigma behind this really convenient feature that should be used for DJs who just need to step away from the decks for a little bit and not rely on it to actually do mixing for them. So please let us know in the comments how you feel about the auto mix feature or how you see it as a benefit at your events. Be sure to like and share this video and thank you so much for watching.